Hello, this is David Bonacturo, continuing our series of working actual practice questions for the Financial Risk Manager exam. This is part one, topic three, products and markets, and specifically margin requirements. This question I did borrow from GARP's actual practice questions, although I switched the example from a generic commodity to, to a gold futures contract and used roughly more realistic numbers. I thought it'd be more fun to use a realistic example. But as the question is representative, the best thing you can do after we read the question is pause the video and see if you can work out the answer yourself. There's no substitute for doing or working these practice questions. Let's take a look at the question. Alan bought a gold futures contract at the open on June 1st, so it's a single gold futures contract. The futures price was 1,600 US dollars per ounce, and the contract size was 100 ounces. Ellen set up a margin account with initial margin of $11,000 per contract, and maintenance margin of 8,000 US dollars per contract. The gold futures price varied as shown below. So as part of this question, you're given this price series. Now this is not of the spot price of gold, but of the futures price, we're not given the maturity, doesn't matter. And by design, it's dropping rather dramatically over the five days. And the question is, what is the balance in Allen's margin account at the end of this five days or June 5th, if you like? Let me make two quick points before we pause the video. The first is, we might not have gotten this information. It was nice of them to tell us that the contract size was 100 ounces, although we might be expected to know that, as you know, contract size are specifications of the standardized futures contracts, and we might be expected to know that a gold futures contract is going to be for 100 troy ounces. So this, this information could have been omitted. And secondly, these margin requirements are certainly not decided by Allen. They are requirements determined by the exchange, and they are updated on a, on a semi-regular basis based on the volatility of these commodities. So Allen has no choice about the initial margin and the maintenance margin. And you can see here, this is roughly almost 7%, the initial margin, almost 7% of the contract value. And then the maintenance margin is typically less than the initial margin. Go ahead, pause the video, see if you can get the answer yourself. Okay, let's see how we did. I removed the question and just put the key parameters here. That futures price is 1,600 per ounce. So in Alan's case, that if he goes long this futures contract, which he implicitly I think is going long here, he is committing to purchase 100 uh, per the single contract. He's committing to purchase 100 ounces on a future date at $1,600 per ounce when he entered the contract. As time goes forward, that futures price is going to vary and therefore the value of his contract is going to fluctuate. One contract, as we've already discussed, is a standardized specification of the gold futures contract, 100 ounces. The initial margin determined by the exchange is 11,000 and then the maintenance margin of 8,000 per contract. And so here's where we start with Alan's contract. He goes along the single contract, futures price of 1,600. When he enters that contract, the delivery price is going to equal the futures price. As we go forward in time, the futures price is going to fluctuate. And all the delivery price is going to stay the same. The value of the contract is going to change. And in this case, with the futures price dropping, Allen's long position is losing value. And so this is the point of the margin account. The exchange wants to ensure that Allen's going to be a good counterparty risk or a good credit risk as the exchange is really the counterparty. So here, these numbers are all given as part of the question. We're dropping on the first day, 1600 drops to 1590. That's per ounce. The con the single contract is 100 ounces. So $10 loss times 100 is a daily loss here of $1,000. And so this here is the unique feature of the futures contract as opposed to a forward contract. 
it's a unique characteristic of the futures contract that there is this daily settlement or mark to, marking to market. So the futures price dropped. There's a loss of a thousand. Although the position hasn't been liquidated, it's a mark to market loss on the position of a thousand dollars. Cumulatively a thousand, it's only the first day. So the margin balance drops from 11,000 to 10. 11,000 is the initial margin that Alan deposited in his margin account, but he's experienced here a $1,000 daily mark to market loss on that long position. And so here is the real point of the question. The question wants you to understand initial margin and maintenance margin. The initial margin is the $11,000 that Alan had to deposit when he initiated the long position. Now, the maintenance margin is the number that he needs that account to stay above. So as long as the margin balance remains above $8,000, then Alan's okay and there's not a margin call. So on the first day, the $1,000 loss drops the margin balance from 11000 to 10000 but the maintenance margin is only 8000 so there, there is a mark to market, a daily settlement, a loss, but there is no margin call. Day two, the futures price drops to 1,582, and we have another daily loss of 800, so a cumulative loss of 1,800, and now the margin balance is down to 9,200. But again, the key issue, or the key point, is that we're still above the maintenance margin, so there is no margin call. Day three, another drop a daily drop of 1,400. The cumulative loss is now 3,200 such that the margin balance is now down to 7,800 which is below the maintenance margin. So this is really what the question is quizzing. The understanding here, the margin balance has dropped below the maintenance margin and so that's the tr point of the maintenance margin. The maintenance margin then triggers a margin call. And then here is the pretty tricky idea. The main, the margin call is not for just $200 to top this up to the main, back to the maintenance margin. Rather, the maintenance margin is the trigger, but the margin call requires Alan to restore this back to the initial margin. So the margin call is not for $200 to get us back to $8,000, but rather it's for $3,200 to bring the margin balance back to $11,000 per contract here. He only has a single contract. So with the margin call, he's back to the 11000 By the way, if the futures price had gone up instead of down, he, Alan, will typically be allowed to withdraw some of that so-called excess margin. That's not the case in this scenario. Now then the question here in day four, there's a big drop in the futures price for a daily loss of 3800 now because of the margin call he was at 11000 per contract but the daily loss here brought that margin balance all the way down to 7200 again and again below the maintenance margin such that there's a margin call to top that account back up to not the maintenance margin but back up to the initial margin of 11000 so with the margin call, you can see the margin account is back at 11000 although Allen's had to go into his pocket and deposit more cash. And then on day five, another drop, this time of 2000 The 11000 margin balance drops down to 9000 but that's not enough to trigger a margin call. And then in this case, to these numbers, that would be the answer because there's been two margin calls, although a lot of uh, uh, mark to market or daily settlement losses, the margin balance is currently here at $9,000. So I hope that's helpful. This is David of the Bannock Turtle. Thanks for your time.